In the last video, we learned how to predict the regioisomeric product or the regiochemistry of 4 plus 2 or diels alder cycloadditions between electron poor and electron rich dienes and dienophiles using resonance structures. And from that video, for example, we would conclude in this case that the carbon bearing the methoxy substituent and the carbon bearing the aldehyde substituent would end up in a 1 2 relationship in the major product. They would be connected to adjacent carbons in the cyclohexene product that results. One thing we haven't touched on yet is the fact that this reaction establishes two new stereocenters, one at the carbon of the dienophile bearing the aldehyde group and the other at the carbon of the diene bearing the methoxy group. And so we have a question now about the configurations of these stereocenters. We could, after all, end up with two possible diastereomeric products. In one of the possible diastereomeric products, the methoxy group is up and the aldehyde group is also up. So the methoxy and aldehyde groups have kind of a cis relationship in the newly established six-membered ring. In the other possible diastereomer, let's say the methoxy group is still pointed out towards us, but the aldehyde and methoxy groups could have a trans relationship with the CHO group behind the plane of the screen instead of above it. Because these two possible products are diastereomers, we should expect them to form in unequal amounts, and we should expect one to be favored over the other. And in this video, we'll learn the physical principles that underlie which of these two products is favored. And we'll see how the concerted nature of the Diels-Alder reaction dictates other configurations. For example, if we have multiple substituents in the dienophile, one on each carbon, or even more than one on each carbon, or substituents at the 1 and 2, or 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 carbons of the diene, we'll learn how to talk about the configurations of all four possible stereocenters generated in the most complex, the most stereochemically complex Diels-Alder reactions. The key to understanding stereochemistry in the Diels-Alder reaction is really to think deeply about the spatial positions of groups in the transition state and how those translate into spatial positions in the product. And that's what we're going to do on this slide. Before we launch into analysis of the transition state, though, let's make some definitions of these differently colored groups. The groups in yellow, if we imagine the diene as assuming kind of a C shape, which it, it does, the S cis conformation, if you like, of the diene, these yellow groups are outside of that C. And so we're going to refer to them as out, since they're outside of the C shape formed by the S cis conformation of the diene. The groups inside that C, which are colored green here, we're going to refer to as N. In the dienophile, we've got two sets of groups on either side of the double bond here. The groups in red are pointed, pointed toward the diene as the two reactants approach, and they end up underneath the diene in the transition state. For this reason, we're going to call these groups endo. The groups in blue point away or outside of the diene in the transition state, and we're going to refer to these as exo. To depict the transition state, we're going to take the dienophile and send it below the plane of the screen and then move it underneath the diene. That leads to the transition state that you see here. And the new sigma bonds are forming between the ends of the diene and dienophile, where I'm drawing these dotted lines. If we think about this in three dimensions, and imagine, for example, looking at this transition state from the right. So imagine my eye was here, my head was kind of bisected by the computer screen, and I was looking at the transition state from this direction. Notice that the first things to hit my eye would be the blue and green groups, implying that these are above the plane formed by the cyclohexene ring. That's why the green and blue groups are all on wedges. Another thing to point out here, which is true of all the groups with the same color, is that two groups with the same color will always be cis. The two exo groups, which are cis in the starting dienophile, are cis in the product. The same is true of the endo groups. Likewise, the N groups in the diene are cis to one another, and the out groups in the diene are also cis to one another. That's a consequence of the concerted nature of this reaction. So take a moment to pause the video now and make sure that you can correlate the configuration of the product, specifically the positions of groups located at these four new stereocenters here, with the positions of the groups in the transition state and going all the way back to the reactants, the positions of the endo, exo, out, and in groups in the starting dienophile and diene. 
there's a pattern to these stereochemical relationships that has to do with also with the concerted nature of the transition state and the way the endo and exo groups orient themselves with respect to the out and in groups. One thing we should notice, for example, is that the out group and the endo group, the out groups in yellow and the endo groups in red on the diene and dienophile respectively, are pointed kind of in the same direction in the transition state and end up cis in the product. So notice we see those in the transition state and then in the product, these two groups end up here and they have a cis relationship. Because switching either from an out group to an in group or an endo to an exo group changes the group we're looking at at a particular carbon, there's a kind of toggle relationship that exists here for the various stereochemical relationships. And let me show you what I mean by that. Based on the conversation we just had, we've shown that the out group and the endo group in the diels alder transition state end up with a cis relationship in the product. An out group and an endo group have a cis relationship in the product. If we toggle one of those, we end up with the opposite stereochemical relationship. So for example, an out group and an exo group have a trans relationship in the product. And we can see that, for example, if we look at a yellow group compared to a blue group. Notice that the blue group is pointed out towards us and the yellow group away from us. Out and exo have a trans relationship. If we turn our attention now to in groups, in groups, groups pointed inside the C shape of the diene, and we look now at the orientation of in groups relative to endo groups in the dienophile, these have a trans relationship. Again, notice that if we look at the position of a red group relative to a green group, we have a trans relationship with one of them up and the other one down. And finally, continuing the idea of a toggle, that if we switch one, the configuration changes. If we look at the relative positions of N groups on the diene and exo groups on the diene file, we'll notice that we're back to a cis relationship again. And so, for example, the N, one of the N groups in green on the diene here has a cis relationship with the exo blue group in the diene file. So this kind of toggle rule can be helpful to determine the relative positions of groups in a cyclohexene product. And it works no matter the complexity of the starting materials, since all of the groups in the diene and dienophile can be classified as either out or in, and endo and exo. Now, for a dienophile with two different groups attached on either side of the double bond, things get interesting. For example, take a dienophile like this, an unsaturated ester, with an H opposite the ester. Now we have a question of which group is endo or which side, we might say, goes endo, which side orients itself in the endo position as this dienophile approaches, say, a diene. We'll answer that on the next slide by introducing an empirical rule for the outcome of Diels-Alder reactions called the endo rule.